Welcome in to the Shop Management Show presented by AutoLeap. I'm your host, Will. This podcast will explore the experiences, challenges, and lessons learned of auto repair shop owners. We'll cover every topic imaginable from EVs to ADOS, right to repair, the technician shortage, and so much more. AutoLeap is a cloud-based shop management software that allows shop owners to better run their business, increase efficiency, and grow revenue. You can find a link to schedule a free demo with AutoLeap in the show notes of this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Can you share an instance when you discovered something totally unexpected while reviewing or restoring a car? Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm actually looking around the shop. When you're when you're restoring cars, obviously you're always going to find something unexpected. Probably one of my favorite memories um, of my first project, the eighty nine two forty. Um, I actually got this on camera when I was first taking apart some of the interior. Um, I actually found the original window sticker for the car scrunched up in the regulator track in the passenger side door. <laughs> so i i'm i'm a that's a huge thing to me like you know anytime i buy something or have the opportunity to have the original window sticker like i have to have it because i think it's part of the car's character and story and while that car is nowhere close to being original anymore um it's still amazing like that thing was smushed up into an accordion since 1989 basically and i was able to slowly peel it apart and you know heat it up and move it and i got it laminated and straightened for the most part so that that absolutely is my favorite um as far as reviewing a car I, I, without going into too much of the specifics like i've more so with older vehicles you run into a lot of unexpected problems like um you know i'd be filming uh a very iconic car that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. And all of a sudden I try to go to do my startup clip and the battery's dead or I'm filming it. And all of a sudden I look and it's like getting ready to overheat. And I'm like, Oh boy. Like, <laughs> and some of those opportunities I've driven like a while to get to those. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> so like with the new cars, I don't have to worry about that quite as much, but even with some of the newer cars, I, I've run into situations where, you know, a lot of the power mechanisms, uh, like, you know, power seat adjusters or something like that would just stop working. And I'm like, well, I definitely can't film that. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to get creative and, and work around some of those filming issues sometimes, but, you know, it's it's mechanical stuff things happen that's great that's hilarious catching some of your reactions to that on camera is probably pretty priceless for your audience pivoting to youtube and you leveraging that as a platform itself how has leveraging youtube benefited your career and then the growth of your brand overall without youtube there there would be no 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 brand um i mean right now I'm actually working closely with a with a partner YouTube partner manager to help try to strategize the channel and and you know that's kind of a feature that's available to a lot of people you know once you get to a certain viewership but being able to have that platform where I can express you know everything that I want to express from you know car perspectives you know I I do everything you know, I do a lot of other social media too, like you know, Instagram and Facebook and whatnot. I haven't gotten into TikTok. I probably never will. Um, there's a bunch of other things that I just don't have the capability to do because I had to do so much as it is. But yeah, you, YouTube's wonderful. And YouTube has a lot of features built into it nowadays from, you know, the shorts, you know, competing against TikTok and reels and all that kind of stuff from that to community interactions for to the YouTube lives, which again, I'm going to try to do more of that just because it's, it's fun and great way to interact with people. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been wonderful, even with all the changes and some of the difficulties and stuff that, that there has been with, you know, trying to figure out the algorithm, which nobody can figure out, apparently. <laughs> um, aside from stuff like that, you know, I'm very, very blessed to be able to do what I have loved to do for so long. YouTube is often an underexplored avenue for both auto repair shops and restoration shops for growing their business. What role do you think YouTube can play in helping shops grow? 
I think it could play an important role, but for a shop's perspective, I think social media, Facebook, Instagram might be a better avenue just because of how much manpower it does take to create, you know, good content. Now, if you're doing like the YouTube shorts or something like that, that's a much better way, I think, for a shop to do things. I mean, if you've got enough budget to have like a little small little production team of two, three people and have people actually filming the work going on in the shop and cutting together videos and or episodes or, or something like that, I think it could do very well. It's just you have to weigh the pros and cons of how much time it's going to take, how much manpower it's going to take. And you can't take away actively from, you know, or via you can't take away from vehicles you're actively working on because that, you know, takes the shop's time. It takes the customer's time. You can't pass that, you know, cost on to the customers either. So, um, you know, it, it's it would work in different ways for different shops. It's just you got to consider, you know, time time versus value and what you're going to get out of it absolutely and would you recommend for smaller shops outsourcing this maybe to a marketing agency or some type of video agency how do they balance the investment of that versus the the roi on that and what they could expect out of creating successful youtube shorts and youtube videos in general the how-to section is very big right now um there's a lot of creators that have done very well with it on youtube and off youtube i know there's a lot of you know tiktok people that have gotten really big with doing you know kind of like day in the life type stuff in with shops so i think it's kind of a gamble no matter what because you're going to put yourself out there you're going to take up time you're going to take up resources but if it pays off it'll pay off very well especially Nowadays, it's more important than ever to have transparency with your customers. And I've actually, uh, there's one dealership in particular that I, um, my wife took her car there. And after they did their service, they shot like basically a couple minute video stitched together of like, you know, here's your brake rotor or brake pads are in great shape. There's nothing going on in the engine bay. There's no leaks. And they were showing, they were literally showing you being that you're not in the bay, you know, they did all the work and basically giving you a status update instead of just coming to the counter and saying, oh yeah, this was good, this was good, this was good. Like they're actually showing the customer this. I think stuff like that versus trying to, you know, strike it big on YouTube or get a popular channel or stuff like that, using the videos as a tool to enhance confidence with your customers is probably the biggest priority that you need to try to focus on first and then have the other stuff come as a as a secondary. So cuz a lot of that kind of stuff depending on, you know, the, the personality of whoever's filming it, if they, you know, kind of funny or if it's like an entertainment type value as well. I mean, some of that can I think it could be a big benefit if you're not trying to, you know, make it make it big on youtube so to speak like 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 we've talked about before don't go into it with you know this idea that it's going to be this wonderful extra revenue stream or or, or something like that because you're going to be disappointed <laughs> i mean not to say that it couldn't at some point i hope it would for it, everybody but i think the most important thing is leveraging it as a tool to build trust with your customers one example in particular i know of one dealership um that we took uh, one of our cars to recently and just you know did basic service but they actually cut together like a couple minute video of showing different aspects of the car you know basically you know we performed all these services here's your brake pads here's this here's that everything looks good so instead of you just taking somebody's word for it you get a neat little video of of the tech actually showing you your car and what they looked at so that especially if you're if you're able to use the youtube shorts feature you can make little snippet videos like that that can not only be beneficial to the customer but at the same time a inter something of entertainment value now 
there's other variables in there, personality of the tech or, you know, your long-term goals with it. If you actually want to have some kind of entertainment value with it, because there's a lot of people out there that have struck it big on YouTube and social media and stuff, doing little short videos of basically day in the life type stuff um, and showing what goes on in the shop, showing like a crazy problem that, you know, this vehicle came in or, you know, something unexpected. I mean, there's a ton of opportunities to have cool, quick hitting content. And I think, you know, that is going to be a lot more beneficial for shops in the long term versus trying to do full on production value, having like a team of people trying to film like a reality TV show. Like I would not recommend doing that unless you know, each individual shop assessed their needs and wants and desires, and they wanted to do that. Um, the shorter content is 100%, in my opinion, more valuable. I really like the part you said of keeping kind of your goals of how you approach this in check while at the same time realizing it is a way to earn your customer's trust. And obviously, customer trust is so important, especially in auto repair. Moving to lessons and inspirations from your very unique journey in the space. Looking back, what are some of those key lessons you've learned that you'd like to share with aspiring auto enthusiasts interested in creating YouTube content, and then also the auto repair shops who may have interest in adding that video element? So speaking from a former shop owner's perspective, I actually tried to start a restoration shop uh, on a, on the side in addition to YouTube. And for a while, it, it did pretty good. Um, my primary goal with wanting to start the shop was to broaden my horizons, get to work on more things, and hopefully have an additional stream of content for the channel. And, you know, worked on a lot of cool things, met a lot of really cool people. But at the end of the day, it just became way too much of a burden. Um, and that's kind of what I talked about, you know, just a bit ago about, you know, weighing your pros and cons of, you know, developing all this content in addition to having to work on the vehicles. And if you don't have enough manpower to support that, it will crumble and that wasn't the reason the shop you know kind of fell apart but you know between you know me needing to focus on my bread and butter which is youtube and making sure that i'm serving up the obligations that i'm committed to from the youtube perspective the shop just wasn't viable and i i've got a wonderful space uh you know a couple different shops uh here at my at my house that I can work in and do everything that I need to do with YouTube. It just wasn't enough space for a full blown shop. But my, my, my point is it can get overwhelming really, really quick, no matter if you're just doing YouTube as, as a business, like I am, or trying to feed in YouTube or TikTok or, or reels or whatever into your existing shop. Um, it's, you just, you just got to look at it from a business perspective at the end of the day and decide if it legitimately makes sense. And maybe it doesn't make sense for you to make entertainment value content. Maybe it just makes sense to do what I was talking about earlier about making the little snippet videos just to increase customer transparency. But probably the biggest issue that I ran into with the shop is dealing with customers that had extreme trust issues because there's, I mean, it's unfortunate, but there's a lot of restoration shops that take in a whole lot of customers and stuff and just seem to build things forever. <laughs> like years and tens of thousands of dollars, hundred thousand dollar plus into a build and you don't really know what they did. So that was really important to me to, to build that trust from the get go in whatever ways that I could. And honestly, auto leap was a really big part of that because I could send pictures and updates on the regular and it really wouldn't take that much time out of my you know typical day to day um to do that but just the little bit of extra snippets that i put into that really helped with with increasing trust and getting repeat business um so that 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 end of it was wonderful it just 
it just became too much for me to juggle. You brought up a point in terms of your partnership with Auto Leaf. How did that relationship come about and what has the experience been like overall? So with having all of the different builds, not not even not even talking about the shop, just YouTube alone. I can't keep up with everything in my head. I had papers all over the place. I've got a filing cabinet over here that's an absolute mess still. And it, it actually happened at the right time. Um, I was talking to Autoleap about, you know, it, it, advice. I had heard about the software and, you know, trying to think of ways that I can incorporate it into the YouTube end of it. Um, the shop stuff came later. But being able to organize my personal builds and create my own workflow sheets and and I can actually go back and, you know, look and see what I've done, especially on, you know, this Fiero that I talked about that is technically a client car, but it is a YouTube build at the same time. Um, I can keep all of that in check and have the invoicing um, and not have massive stacks of paper all over my desk all over the place that I have to go back into later and reorganize and do all that stuff so um, from an organizational standpoint it really helped me a lot but the partnership came about fortunately with my um, my Nissan uh, the 240 um, it's been a while since I've worked on it, unfortunately, just because of everything that's happened this year with other builds and the shop closing up and stuff like that. Um, but the goal of my partner, the goal with me wanting to partnership or having the opportunity to partnership is to be able to show people that, you know, it, it doesn't have to be as complicated as it is <laughs> like, um, time time is money at the end of the day and anything that you can do to help streamline your day-to-day -day operations from organization to reaching out to setting appointments to the transparency um i mean it took a little bit for me to get used to um just because i was so used to the old school way of doing things you know the pen and paper type stuff but once, you know, I got a, got into it a little bit more and then fed the shop stuff into it, I, I couldn't have done it otherwise. No way. Unless I had like a team of, you know, a whole bunch of people. Um, Auto Leap, not, not to say that Auto Leap would have replaced a whole bunch of teammates, but it was an invaluable thing for me to have to help me be as productive as I could be, um, you know, just across the board. It's It's been great. Love to hear about that partnership and then your experience using the software as well. And for our audience, you can schedule a demo with AutoLeap in the show notes of this episode. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kyle. And we'll be back soon with the next episode of the Shop Management Show presented by AutoLeap.